In today's video, I want to take you inside a project that I built out for APM. Today's video is going to be a little bit less of a tactical approach and more of theory about how I decided to solve some challenges that I faced in building a toolkit for APM, which is a music provider within the sports industry. APM approached me because they had a new brand guide, and in the brand guide, it had a ton of different colors that they wanted to leverage and some styles. So my task was to create a toolkit that the internal team could leverage based on the new brand guides. One of the biggest challenges that I faced was all the different color schemes that they could deploy with any asset. And by giving them the most flexibility and variety, I needed to create a number of different controls that would allow them to get the results that they were looking for. So in this toolkit, I have three different assets, the text call out, the title card, and the quote graphic. The quote graphic and the title card each needed to be able to go horizontal or vertical 16 by nine and nine by 16. So I created everything in a 1920 by 1920 comp so that we could easily flex between the two. All three assets have the same color and text treatments and the logo integration, being able to take their full logo or make the adjustment to change the colors of the logo with each asset. My hope in showing you this is that you can get a sense of how you can break things down and tackle different elements while trying to keep things as simple as possible for the end user, which is always our ultimate goal when it comes to templates and toolkitting. One of the biggest challenges that I faced in this toolkit was the volume of different colors that needed to be used. This is created for the ability to have a bunch of variety. I actually also had a white and a black, which is not included here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six times three is 18. Black and white is 19 and 20. So I had 20 colors that needed to be used over the course of all the different assets. So the way I ended up breaking this down is by color family and by the chroma options here. So we have a dark and we have a light and we have a middle with the blue. So let's jump into the text callout so you can see what that looks like. So this text callout is going to highlight some text that we have up here. We have the ability to change the font to something else. Let's change this to industry ultra, right? And I can also add more lines to this text and it's going to flex. Toolkit by Baller FX. If I click off, there we go. And you can see these other boxes automatically updated. And if I move this to a third line, everything updates again there. So I also have the ability to adjust my Y offset here. And that is going to just change the spacing here. If the text gets longer, they wanted the flexibility to be able to adjust this to hide those boxes a little bit closer behind as opposed to keeping it consistent with every asset. They also wanted the capability to maybe have this be a square box as opposed to rounded edges. So they have that flexibility in here as well. And sometimes maybe they just want one box with the text in it. And so we have the ability to turn those other boxes on and off. And you can also see that I have my, if I right click, I have my protected regions here. And those were created by adding a marker here on the timeline. See if I do this here, if I right click on it, I can enable protected regions and then drag them out. And the protected regions, I'm gonna delete this now. The protected regions, We'll see how that works within Premiere, but basically I'm encapsulating any of the intro animation here within this protected region. So if they want to expand or contract the asset on the Premiere Pro timeline, 
it is going to protect the intro and the outro to make sure that the animation still works in and out. All right, so I briefly talked about the different colors. So let's quickly talk about how these work. So because these assets have three different backgrounds and three different options on top of that, I decided to break these down by color families. And then within the color family, we can adjust a tint or a shade from here. We want the back one to be blue. Just pick the blue and maybe we want it to be the light color. And they have total flexibility with each asset to decide what they want for each one. Now, the title card master and the quote graphic master are also in this same vein. But let me hop over to Premiere because you can see that these look a little bit different. And that's because there's a horizontal and a vertical version that I captured into one Mogert so that they only had to pull up one and had the ability to use it both in the vertical format and 16 by 9. So let's hop over to Premiere. You can see this text callout that we, we talked about and showed over here. And again, over here, it works the same way. So by dollar FX, if I click off, going to work the exact same way that I showed you with an After Effects. Okay, great. So this is the title card and I'm in a 16 by nine comp. So right now my format is horizontal. If I switch it to vertical, it would get cut off. But over here in my nine by 16, I want that vertical. And you can see the horizontal is cut off. So this is the same Mogert in both sequences so that there's there's not too many different assets here that they need to keep track of. There's three assets, and they can decide whether they want this horizontal or vertical. All right, let me go back into my 16 by 9 comp, and we want to make this horizontal so it fills the screen. And one of the things I did was at the beginning of this process was talk to uh, my contact about music. Because this is a, a music company, and I actually like to use music to help establish the, the rhythm of the graphics and how they come in. I had him send me a couple tracks, and I obviously wanted to orient it to this throwback look and feel that they, they had established already with the colors, the simple layouts, and the retro vibe. So, so after I received a couple tracks, I found one that I felt kind of fit the retro vibe that we were going for. And let me just play that back here for you real quick. So one of the things that jumped out to me was a lot of the syncopated rhythms within that music. So that's what I used as my inspiration to have these assets come onto the screen. So let me play this for you, the little part that I pulled out. So you can see that slightly syncopated rhythm allowed something to come in first and then the other two parts come in pretty quickly behind one another after that. Cool. Same thing with this. And if I... Show the quote graphical curve. So that's what I used as the base of how I began to bring things on and animate them. So let's quickly talk about the protected regions that we had discussed, right? So the the intro and the outro. So when you have a protected region Mogert, I can drag this as long as I want on the timeline here. So it's, it is going to animate on the intro. And if I drag this all the way across, you're not going to get outro animation until you get to the very, very end because it's sticking that animation to the end. Now, conversely, if I make this super short, You're going to see it go away. 
quicker. So that's helpful if you're creating these responsive type assets so that the editor can decide when something comes in and when it should go out without having to make any adjustments or uh, lose any of the animation on one side or the other. So let's jump in and go through the different options here within this title card. We have our text that is nearly identical to my text callout. One of the big differences here is the font size. Again, shrink it down. We can take it up. And you can see that the box also adjusts with that. So let me just add some more text here. So if I click off two lines and it's all gonna work the same. Great, and we can adjust the Y position here as well. So the this is the Y shadow offset. There we go. So I also have this global position, which adjusts the primary text asset, but also the background elements. If I want the text position, by itself without adjusting the uh, the background elements. So I could technically pull this down, I could pull this up, so it's sitting a little bit higher by itself. And my logo position, depending on how high I want this first box, let's say we go there and I bring this one down so it kind of overlaps it, I probably want my logo to be a little bit higher so that it looks stylistically about the same. So those allow us to make some different looking compositions while still not breaking the look and the feel that we're trying to accomplish. So our text color here can be changed. Let's just make this dark so you can see that it goes black to white. Any colors are also on the table here with the options. And the background color adjustments are going to look exactly like the text callouts. We have our primary color adjustment, and then we have our chromatic options for tint or shade. And we also have our rounded edges here so we can make more square if we would like. And then our single background. All right. And then let's look at the logo. Because this was definitely something that I had to work on quite a bit to get it to do exactly what I wanted it to do. So we still want the logo to appear as it is here, but they also wanted to have the ability to change the variety of colors that their logo appeared in. So I have a primary logo here. And in order for this to be seen and, and look good, we got to go up here and change the background adjustment. So this is this is the lower bar here. Background three is the lower bar, the red. So why don't we change this to be, there we go. Change it to be the middle black and white. All right, so let me twirl this up to give us more space so we can see what we're doing. When the primary logo is checked, the primary logo, this is how their logo looks on their site and everything is the only thing you can see. Nothing else works. If I try and change any of this, it doesn't matter. The primary logo overrides everything. But if I uncheck the primary logo, we have a black to white option. So color one is black, white, dark. So this is the black color, which is going to be up top. And we have it going to black and white light. So it goes from black to white. I have the option here to invert the colors. So then we'd have white on top, black on bottom, which obviously doesn't fit with this background very well. So let me uninvert that. So we can change this to be any number of colors, red to white, and we can even do, so it's red dark, we can even do red light. So it takes on some properties, but doesn't get all the way to white. 
if I change this to white, you can obviously see that the the hue on music and the circle behind the play button is a little bit brighter. And let's say we want to do blue dark to blue. Let's make this to blue light. There we go. So it's all blue. But I kind of want this the other way around. All we have to do is hit this checkbox and the lighter color appears up top with the darker color and the play button. So setting it up this way provides a ton of different flexibility to allow them to make as many adjustments and changes as they want while also keeping this as simplified as possible with only choosing two colors and allowing them the opportunity to invert or change the different hues. All right, let's jump into the quote graphic. So the quote graphic has a lot of the same elements that we've already touched on before. Obviously now there's a replace image here. So let's go ahead and replace this image. There's a couple different ways to do this. One of them is to replace from Explorer from this hamburger button. The other one is to just drag and drop from your project panel into this area. All right, so let's say that now that we have the image in here, we actually don't want this text to be so long. Well, we can shorten it. Let's click off there. And you can see that the name automatically pops up because I have the name set to look at the height of the text here and offset it by a certain amount. If we go even lower, or if we, if we delete even more, if I click off, it jumps up again. So because the text over here can be a variety of different lengths, I also set up some X and Y adjustments over here. So we can adjust the text all by itself. If it's shorter, we want it probably more like there. And we also have an option to adjust left and right on the X axis. So if I go down to my background colors and adjustments, you can see my I have a quote box position here. And this will also allow the editor to adjust how it appears in the composition. If there's longer text, we're going to want to push this box further over because the text is going to fill up a little bit more. And then they also have the capability to adjust this text so that they can get the right margin so that it still maintains the, the look and the feel that they're going for. We still have our rounding here, and you can see it's impacting all of that. We can turn it off so it's just the image and the logo colors all do the same thing as well. Let me undo some of that so we get back to that. All right, so let's hop over into this nine by 16 and everything in here is going to look familiar, except for up here, we're just gonna change the format to be vertical. So right now, as this came in, you can see that the logo is getting a little bit cut off and that's, because our quote box position is here at zero, and we can simply move this up so that the image is up top, the logo appears, and we're good to go. If I take this back to the beginning, and I should have also mentioned that. Changing our text here doesn't change the animation or the, the number of lines of text. If I delete half of this, you can see that the, the name and the logo both come up because they're both set to a certain fixed amount below however tall this text is. But it also is set up so that 
these will come in like they're the next line of text so that all these come in and it feels like it all fits together. Now if I undo, you can see it's all the text is still coming in and we don't see the name yet until the end. So this is looking at how many lines of text there are and each line of text is going to animate in and when this sees that the last line of text has animated in, this will follow with that Y spacing offset, but in the correct time. So it all feels like it fits together no matter how long this text is. So that was a rundown on how I created this toolkit for APM to allow them to quickly update and iterate as they're creating content to showcase their brand.